Now, when you became CFO of Tyco International, it was going through some major changes. Uh, tell us about what some of those changes were and what your role was during that time. Yeah, you know, I've gone through a lot of changes uh, over my career, but nothing as dramatic as we were going through at Tyco because, uh, I mean, the thing with Tyco, which was very unique, and uh, it was unique when I was in the midst of it, it's unique even, you know, 10 years later now, but uh, where the focus, we are very fortunate to have a CEO in Ed Breen, um, who is currently the CEO or chairman of DuPont. And, uh, you know, he was a real believer in driving shareholder value. A lot of CEOs focus on getting bigger, growing the company bigger. Ed Breen's focus was on growing the value for the shareholders, which doesn't necessarily mean getting bigger. And really what, ha what was going on at Tyco is understanding the value of the portfolio, individual components of the portfolio, and whether they belong within the organization or they should be spun out into separate companies and you would extract more value for them. You know, before I joined Tyco, they had just done a spin-off uh, of their medical devices business, Covidian, and their electronics business, which was TE Connectivity. And then a few years later after I joined, we felt there was another step that we had to take. And that was the spin of the ADT business. Uh, and really the thinking was that the ADT business, having very stable cash flows, could take on a lot more leverage than Tyco as a whole could. And, uh, and therefore we could get more value out of it as a separate company than you know, within, within the portfolio. And so we did that, and we, um, the second thing we did was we took our flow control business, which is a very high growth business, and therefore demanded a very, you know, could on its own get a very high multiple than what Tyco as a whole was getting in the marketplace. And um, uh, we merged that with uh, Pentair. And for the Tyco shareholders, these two transactions were huge value creations. And actually, when you look at the time period, that we're talking about and compare it to S&P 500 and compare it to Berkshire Hathaway, which is the, you know, the Warren Buffett story. Actually, the Tyco story is a multiple of the Warren Buffett story in terms of value creation for the shareholders. So we did something very unique uh, in terms of creating that uh, shareholder value. And then, you know, in terms of your question on, you know, the biggest challenges that, you know, we were facing at that point in time, Clearly, um, all this, when you do to an organization, uh, it, it causes uh, uncertainty. It causes disruption in people's lives. And to be able to then bring that, bring order back into the organization through all these changes requires willpower. <laughs> because a lot of people come into your offices every day and say, the ruin, you're going to break down the business. We're going to lose all our customers and all kinds of second guessing that goes on. And really, I mean, from a point, you know, I can understand people's perspective, and they're scared of the unknown, and that is where your role as the uh, one of the chief architects is to is to really bring stability and be the rock uh, that people are looking for to make sure that you know things are going to be good at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that was some of that to me was the biggest thing we were facing. And how did that whole process go, that whole change management process and guiding people through that, making sure that they were on board with all the changes, that yeah. they understood what was going on? How was that process? Yeah, I mean, it's not easy. You know, it's uh, not everybody made it uh, on the bus, so to speak, uh, but uh, most did. And, um, and it was really the reassurance. To me, that's part of leadership, you know, the ability to con uh, communicate and convince people uh, on your team that this is the right thing and so you convince them and they in turn go ahead and convince others and then you spread that message across the organization and get everybody rowing in the same direction. In some ways these are cliches uh, but when you do it every day it's definitely not easy but I think we had a lot of success at the end of the day and uh, the, the company is thriving and actually just uh, they uh, merged with, uh, uh, with the Johnson Controls and now have a much bigger enterprise that's getting the benefit of all the structures that we had put in place uh, to maximize shareholder value.